and welcome to SEC Sports Roundtable. This is your host, Shane Bailey. And as we did our pre-work here, we actually have a roundtable. So uh, I think this is the largest group we've had in assembly yet, and this is our 50th episode. So uh, just a little over a year recording and 50 episodes. We've done pretty good about having one almost every week here for you guys. And I know that the college football season is less than two weeks away. So you know that it's going to be here on a weekly basis because there's going to be lots to talk about going forward. But uh, let's get uh, some introductions here. Then we'll get some housekeeping and get right into some things. So we'll just start on my left. Camera is right. Uh, John Schultz, welcome aboard. Been a long time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to glad you were able to make it. Drew Young. Excited, man. Three in a row and, and actually get to talk about uh, a couple good teams this time. Blair Smiley, right back from a big big trip to South Carolina for the PGA Championship. That's right. Glad to be back. All right. And Britton Burton. Glad to be back, too. It's been yeah. a while. So uh, all, all uh, individuals on the roundtable have experience with this. So uh, thank you guys all for coming out here. Thank you for you uh, out there watching or listening that uh, you're the reason, I guess. No, we're the reason we do this. We do it because... Uh, we want to because <laughs> we don't know how many of you are out there really listening or, or paying attention. We, uh, I, I, you can you can check out our YouTube channel there, Drew. Uh, we had a nice offhanded comment about middle school. Uh, check the uh, podcast title. I think it was uh, episode thirty-eight, uh, or I can look it up here in a second <laughs> when we start talking. But uh, I'll Drew take over for a second and talk about something, and I'll, I'll talk about something. Yeah, just Vamp. whatever. I think they call it vamping. Yeah, I don't know what the, the the word is. And I don't know that we're the most professional guys anyway. If you're looking for a professional, uh, polished uh, podcasters, then you're in the wrong spot. If you're looking for some fools that like to talk football uh, and other sports. I, I can't really think of anything other than football right now, so that's kind of on my mind. But <laughs> then you're in the right spot. But uh, I, I'd love to see it. We It's kind of weird, you know. You, you don't think anybody listens, and then you see some comments, and it kind of cracks you up. Yeah, it's it, it goes all the way back to the Beamer Ball episode, which was in the middle of the springtime. Episode 38, he says, and it, I'll give him a shout out because he, he posted a comment. Mormon for Ron Paul. Um, pathetic. Our country is falling apart, and I'm watching, <laughs> I'm watching failed middle school athletes spending an hour on sports. But, hey, college football keeps us sane. So That's exactly I, true for me. I was definitely a failed middle school athlete. I don't think I even got to middle school in, in, in my athletic career. So, uh, you know, I think I'll take that as a backhanded compliment because he listened for a whole hour. You know, if you're going to sit there and listen to this for an hour, you've got to be a glutton for punishment or enjoy it, one of the two. So um, we'll get uh, the housekeeping out of the way. Apparently, if you aren't able to realize, we are on YouTube, uh, SCC SRT. We are also trying something new. We normally stream this live, but today we're doing a Google Hangout for those individuals. Uh, see what happens with that. So uh, on, on the Google Hangout, uh, you can check it out there. It'll also be on the YouTube channel if you want to watch it. We are on iTunes as well as Stitcher Radio. Uh, we do keep up information and post out information on a regular basis throughout the week while we're not recording at Facebook as well as uh, that other social media outlet, Twitter. Uh, so both of those, SEC, SRT, if you do a search for that, you're going to find us out there. Um, I said Stitcher Radio, YouTube, iTunes, about anywhere you can get an audio podcast, that RSS feed should pick it up and you can listen to that so that's all the ways you can reach us uh, we are finishing up our two a days and so if you're just brand new joining us what that is is we've looked at two teams one from the east one from the west every week here leading up to the the kickoff of college football like we said just a little over two a little less than two weeks away and so we've covered every team except tennessee and alabama so uh, that, that's who we're going to be covering today. But uh, first, we'll start off with a little news. Uh, we'll follow up on some, some of the news from last week with Honey Badger. Uh, I think he, I guess he's, you know, when you're a Heisman candidate and you are now suspended from playing, has that ever happened? Where, I mean, I know there's been Heisman candidates that not have played the next year because they're seniors. But uh, someone that was a finalist the year before not being able to, to be in the running because they're not on a team. I mean, it, can you all ever recollect that happening? I don't remember that happening. I would I would say venture to say that it could have happened, uh, especially with like an injury or something like that. But this is clearly not an injury case. I mean, this is just a kid being an idiot. So I think that's pretty big news to to lose a, a Heisman finals and the defensive yeah. player of the year, which is the is the big deal. And I, I find it pretty interesting that LSU is 
there are people are kind of undervaluing the impact this is going to have on LSU. It's kind of like, ah, I mean, I know a little bit of dip in some of the new polls that came out, but I mean, to me, that's a big, big loss that the guy made a ton of plays last year, and for him just to be completely gone, I don't think you just kind of move on to the next guy. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. But the the news out from the latest on the the update, I guess, is he's going to stay at LSU. He's not even going to go somewhere else to play. Any comments? It's all silence over here. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think the the big thing, and I said this last week, but we'll get some other some other people's thoughts. I think the big thing is this is a, a second year in a row that LSU has a huge, huge distraction right before the season. Last year it was a Jordan Jefferson, and they had a few other players with the whole, you know, beating up a Marine or, or whatnot in the shoe scandal. What, that was right when the yeah. they and they had all that, and they really overcame that. And I just think that was a big deal to overcome that and stay together. And now you've got another distraction this year, and I think that's the tough part: is can you overcome? I agree with with what some people have said that I don't know that that Matthew was as good of a, a cover cornerback right. as as even the the Reed kid or other guys in their secondary, but uh, I think the big thing is they're le- they're losing a team leader and they've got another distraction that they've got to they've got to try to overcome. Yeah, that you add on Morris Claiborne and um, I mean obviously your D line is going to be ridiculous and it will make up for a lot of stuff, but I mean to have that guy back there. Uh, I mean, he what he have four eleven force fumbles in the last two years. I mean, something stupid. I think um, it was mine last yeah. year. So I mean, it, the the guy just made plays, and yeah, you you could throw all over him. I mean, he wasn't the greatest cover corner, and he was short on stature. But I mean, from the you know from the special teams to the big plays, I mean, he just had a knack to doing it. Any other comments? I mean, I think it's a I think it's going to be a distraction for those guys as as you move forward, but. Like you said, they're they're used to it. It's a smile. Just I was looking at the title of one of the other podcasts. I can swallow a roach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, we try to we try to find humor in our titles. So we generally have like one or two just uh, moments where some somebody says something idiotic, and and that just always is the the title of the podcast. It just it just cracks me up. And and. I think more than more than not, the idiotic comments come from the the host. So yeah, <laughs> we we uh, we generally say some some bad things sometimes, but uh, that's what's fun about it. Well, the uh, other piece of news that we'll hit on quickly before we get into the the UT Alabama stuff is uh, the AP poll came out. And Blair, I think you brought up a point as you were talking about uh, the Matthew situation is that you know the voters of the AP I think took that into consideration when they made their votes because. The coaches' poll came out, what, I guess, three weeks ago now, uh, and LSU was was number one. But uh, the the AP poll comes out, and they fall to thir- three, with USC being number one and Alabama number two. So th- I think that weighed heavily. But uh, you know, we'll get some some comments from Britain here later, especially as we talk about Alabama. But uh, you know, USC piggybacks them again um, in this in this poll, so they they still get left out, even yeah. though. You know they might arguably be arguably be the best team in the the uh, SEC. Well, the interesting and thing the on the the coaches poll, if I remember correctly, LSU was had the third most first place votes. I think um, Alabama and USC had higher first place votes, um, but they they obviously got into the first spot on total number of votes. But uh, that was kind of unique that they were third in first place, but were actually number one. So I don't know how the AP votes i don't know how that works yeah i mean it's it's a little they were actually third in first place votes on the ap i think the the funny thing about this is they actually delayed the uh the vote because of the whole uh tyron matthew uh getting kicked out thing so yeah i think it definitely made a difference and, and once again i think it's semantics uh i do think it's kind of funny that alabama in my opinion i don't see how you wouldn't rate alabama the number one team well, I guess I can see how you wouldn't. I would rate Alabama the number one team just because they're the defending national champions and they've done it, you know, what, two out of the last three years? Is that right? Uh, I mean, there's just no reason, in my opinion, not to do that. And, and they're second in both of them. So I don't think that you can just use that as bulletin board material, but I think you can kind of – a little bit of a chip on the shoulder at the beginning of the season, especially going to that Michigan game. It could be in response to, uh, you know, after 2009 when they did win the championship and then in 2010 they were ranked number one and – can't really call 10 and 3 a dud but they had a couple of dud games so a lot of people may see lost seven defensive starters you know they're the same thing's going to happen they're going to have some blow-ups but um 
I don't know. USC's got some talent, though, so I can see putting them number one. John? Well. Yeah, I think the thing about USC that, you know, worries me a bit is what happens when they, you know, if anybody gets hurt, they don't really have, they're not as deep as they do. They're still down 15 scholarships. So it's going to be when the grind of the season happens, if one person goes down, then what happens to them? I I think that's part of it. But, you know, when you look at the voting, the, the voters didn't seem to, to put that yeah. into consideration. Yeah. I think what they looked at more than anything, though, and, and this is my opinion, is the schedule. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at what USC has to go through to go undefeated and what Alabama has to go through to get undefeated, uh, you know, USC has the easiest road without any question. But – in my opinion, should you punish a team because they have a difficult schedule? And that's basically the way I see the voting as win, is that Alabama got punished because they play in the SEC. Yeah. And they're going to have to beat LSU. They're going to have to beat Arkansas. They're going to have to beat Michigan. Um, yeah, the and other who, thing and who is – who else do they have in the East? We'll cover their schedule we'll later. But Five teams in the top ten? Yeah. The SEC. So, you know, th they, and they're, they're playing all of them, are they not, this year? So uh, you look at that, and you, you think that the voters had to look at that when they made this assumption here when they made this vote. I don't know. Yeah, then you throw in Barkley, which kind of trumps everything because, I mean, he's by far the best, I think, the best quarterback coming back. And, um, you know, that's the thing that the SEC, you know, you don't have a Landry Jones or whatever he is at Oklahoma or a Matt Barkley. I mean, you got some really good quarterbacks, and I think you got more quarterbacks than normal. But it's just, you know, when you throw Matt Barkley in there, I mean, he's – He's going to make up the difference, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with what you said, Shane. I mean, you look at their schedule, and they play uh, they play Stanford, which obviously you lose quite a bit when you lose the number one draft pick. Right. Uh, and then they're they're playing Oregon, so Oregon's their big game. And Oregon was ranked what? In the, they're in the top. They're, they're, five? they're number five, yeah. and I think Oregon's going to be good. But oh well, yeah, mean, Notre Dame. Michael James and yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got Notre Dame in there. That's the last <laughs> game of the season. UCLA, good out of conference schedule. Syracuse, they play Syracuse this year. That's a good one. Hawaii, just a tough schedule, man. Lane Kiffin, you know. <laughs> Lane needed to work on his tan, so he show, is it is it away or home for? No, that's a home game. Oh, so at least they don't have to travel to Hawaii. Yeah, they travel. They never travel outside of the uh, outside of the West Coast. So Syracuse is coming there. Yeah, they go at Stanford, at Utah, at Washington, at Arizona, and at UCLA. Those are their road games. What about Notre Dame? Notre Dame is at home. They never travel outside of uh, the Pacific time zone. That's unbelievable. I mean. You know what? I would rank USC number one if I had a vote. Because of that? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, let's go straight into the, the real conference that we're here to talk about, and that is, of course, the SEC. Uh, like I said, we are in the middle of two-a-days, or I guess at the tail end of two-a-days, we have – uh, Tennessee and Alabama to talk about today, and we could probably flip a coin uh, as to who to go first. But we're going to let Tennessee go first today, uh, only because we think that uh, you know Alabama is the higher ranked team, so they they get honors like in golf. Honors in golf, I mean, they have to go first, but uh, but oh. that's but that's all right. Uh, that's a good analogy. Well, there anyway. we go. That's like I said, idiotic host. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm excited, John. You're a Tennessee fan, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this side of the table is excited. Or and I wore my Tennessee uh, color. Tennessee order. pink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're just like Tennessee. Can't get the right color orange. Exactly. Um, I'm excited. This is the most excited I've been for a season. Um, you know, I'm crossing my fingers. I think the big thing is going to be it, offense. Obviously, they're returning uh, a lot of a lot of players. They've got Tyler Bray. They've got uh, Justin Hunter coming back and, and Derek Rogers and you know you're hoping to find a run game and, and everything every indication from spring practice to, to early fall practice has been that their offensive line is is actually even uh, run blocking a little better than they are pass blocking so that's the big news and then the other side of the ball you're, you're switching defense from a 4-3 to a 3-4 and sometimes a 5-2 so that's big news as well so a lot to be excited about as a Tennessee fan in my opinion. Oh, I'm super excited. Uh, I haven't been this excited in a long time. I mean, I can't even remember the last time. I think my last memory of excitement was right before uh, we got beat by LSU. Was it 2000 in the SEC championship game? Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, th I mean, offense is going to be good. It, it really just depends on if we can run. If uh, I think Neal is key, if he can hold on to the ball, uh, it's going to be big. I, I don't think Marlon Lane is, a, is you know, a SEC-type starter. But uh, we, we definitely need a power back to be in there between the tackles so we can open up the side. Uh, I'm excited. I, you know, we got a bunch of new defensive players, uh, especially on the D-line that I think came in and 
are going to help Centimore and McCullers. Should be pretty good. Is that better? Yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. You're fading them out. No, I mean, and I'll let somebody else weigh in. I'm sorry, I've been talking about Tennessee during every other two days, so <laughs> I guess I can talk a lot about them right now. But uh, I think the big question is, I, I wonder if, if Tennessee fans are building this up too much and Shane probably should be shaking his head and Blair kind of shook his well, head. Well, I'm sitting here smiling the whole time because at the begin at the end of last season, I mean, it was gloom and doom for every it Tennessee was. fan you talked about. and It and, should have been. And but I mean, what has changed other than Hunter's healthy, Bray's healthy? That's, that's well, there you pretty go. Important. New, 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 <laughs> but, yeah. right, but but at the end of the season, you knew they were coming back healthy. Yeah. You know, the coaches changed early. I think. But it, it, at, at, in the winter time, it was, oh gosh, we're we're headed down a road that we might not come yeah. back without a new coach. Th- and now, listen to the Tennessee fans. It's the best. They're more excited now than they've been in years. I think I think offense automatically excites you because I think they have the ability to put up points um, because you think that their offensive line, you know, from what they hear is the – I think y'all had a, a guy that had been in the pros before the Her, offensive line coach. Yeah, Henstead. And I heard a guy talking about this this week is why it came to my head, but um, that they, they feel like the communication and the rapport between the offensive line coach – now is a totally different dynamic than it was last year because the guy was, I guess, relatively wasn't understanding why these kids weren't getting it. You know, he's kind of more in this pro uh, deal, and it, it just kind of – they just never really meshed. Um, but I think those are the big things is that offensively, I think you guys have the ability to put up points. The question's going to be, what's the defense going to do? Can they stop the run? And is the coaching staff that's just a complete overhaul, how's that going to mesh? And, um, you know, from what they're saying is it's more of an addition by subtraction from the coaching staff standpoint. So, um, I think for me, just not being a Tennessee fan, and these are probably the two teams I hate the most in the SEC, so um, nothing. But, I mean, the thing that I want to see, yeah, (laughs) the thing that I want to see is I want to see them play NC State so I can actually see what they actually do on the field. So, I think you can get an idea of, you know, what's going to happen because I think it's an important game. It's probably one of, the, off. one of the biggest games in years, I think. Yeah, yeah I, I think that – and here's the deal, and this is going to just sound ridiculous, but the reason I'm excited right now is because you do get to spend a little time away from the, the last season. You can kind of analyze it. And I look back at last season, and I don't care who you are. If you don't think Tennessee had a very tough schedule last year, I mean a four-game stretch of oh, yeah. Georgia, uh, LSU, at Alabama, and South Carolina. And you look back, and I do feel like – if Justin Hunter doesn't get hurt, that Florida game can be different. That's a 10-point game, and I think that's a big loss to have going into that game. Uh, the South Carolina game was a 14-3 to game, and that's with uh, with Justin Worley at quarterback and without Justin Hunter. Um, and then the uh, the the uh, Georgia game, 12, uh, 20 to 12, and that's with Bray getting hurt at the end of that game as well, and obviously without Hunter. So I do think. I mean, last year. You could only – I mean, if you listed the players that Tennessee could not afford to have go down with an injury, three of probably the top five guys got hurt with, you know, Herman Lathers, your uh, your guy in the middle. I don't know if – I mean, if if you've kind of followed this, I don't know if he's even going to play as much. They keep holding him out of contact drills even, you know, a year after his his injury. Uh, you know, you're talking uh, about lathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah I heard that it's just sure. more just kind of precautionary, just yeah, kind of keep him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, that but at some point, me, like, uh, maybe give him a little bit of time. I mean, it's a little scary to go, and he's he's held out of all these scrimmages and all these contact drills. You know, at some point, you're like, I mean, it's contact in the game. Yeah. So, I think I, th- I think the biggest question for for me, and I don't know if you guys, but it's just the, from a defensive standpoint. You know, what's he going to do with the transition? Um, there's a lot of things there that they could be they could be good and be fine, or it could be a struggle where, you know, and the and the good thing is Tennessee doesn't really run. I mean, they're, y'all are not really playing a ton of running teams. I mean, you could, you're playing Alabama, who's going to run the ball, and you're going to play um, – I'm trying to think who else, LSU? No. Do y'all play LSU this year? No. No. So, I mean – it's just one of those types of deals where you just don't have a bunch of run-heavy teams. Kentucky's so it may not be going to run because they don't have an arm <laughs> with their receiver Kentucky's at quarterback. Just, Kentucky's <laughs> going to have yeah, uh, <laughs> they got Matt their own. Rourke at quarterback. Uh, so what's the issues. scoop on McCullers? Is he supposed to be the, the man in the middle? Is he living up to the hype? Or yeah, the? I mean, I think – I mean, it's just tough to say the, the hype. Yeah, I mean, this kid was a junior college player last year. I think he's, he's doing better than expected, but – uh, I, I don't think Tennessee fans need to think he's going to be the, the savior. And the bottom line is he's a 
six foot seven, three hundred and you know seventy five pound uh, guy that's going to clog up the middle, and he's performed right now. He he started out just kind of sporadically getting some first team uh, snaps, and now he's getting most of the first team snaps. And uh, I mean that that adding him and adding a, a Darian Sentimore, who who's an Alabama level player. When he was at Alabama, I mean he you know he he saw the field and he could play. I mean this is an Alabama level player, so uh, just you know had a few problems and 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 yeah. you know. Some honey badger problems. Didn't, yeah. didn't work out, and, you know, Tennessee welcomed with open arms. So, I think there's big, big uh, and he's performed additions well. on the on the defensive line. Oh, and what's he's more? come back from the spring practice where he wasn't as great yeah. as they thought he was going to be to where he's kind of taken the summer and done a good job is what I heard. So, that's that's definitely good news. I'd say right now in the middle of that 3-4, you know, you got some good people. They just moved uh, – they just moved Walls to the outside to D to D N. They moved uh, Couch out there, so I guess they're pretty happy with what they have to move those guys on the end. Supposedly, uh, they said that um, Mo Couch has been really doing well at the defensive end position. Yeah. It, w- it will be interesting to see though, because even if you have some of the personnel, I mean, any time you switch from a four three to a three four, even in the pros when they switch and they they have they don't oh, have yeah. practice. Well, they have practice limits with the CBA, but not nearly the practice limitations that college players have. You know, it's always a tough transition um, just in terms of knowing your assignments. So you have to expect some growing pains there no matter how strong your person is. Yeah, and I don't think Tennessee is going to go like Georgia did where they just basically turned the switch off and went 3-4 and didn't have any other packages. I mean, it's what it seemed like in Grantham's first year where it was kind of a debacle. Um, I don't – you know, from what they say is they're going to have a mixture – of things and, and a lot of people are multiple that way anyway. Sure. So I, I don't think it's going to be as big of a hiccup. But I think from just the ability to stop the run, because that's the only thing that can stop Tennessee is not having the football to put points on the board. And if somebody can actually run the ball efficiently against them, that's the only worry. Um, and NC State, I don't know much about them. I know they got a good quarterback, but uh, I'm really interested to see because that's a big game. I yeah. mean, it's a real big game. You guys come in as favorites, don't you? Like, like a uh, field goal or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, it opened up as like a six and a half point, uh, a six and a half point favorites, maybe seven point. It's dropped all the way down to about three and a half right now, but should probably should probably tick up again, maybe about a four and a half to a five point favorite would be my guess. But but that's encouraging from a Tennessee standpoint. For I mean, because when we were talking a month or so ago, you know, at the start of these two a days, we mentioned that game, and you know, NC State we thought could have came in as a favorite, and so you know, you're seeing the improvement that you're you're wanting to see. Uh, on the field to, to make the Vegas give you that kind of number. Yeah. Well, and it, it's funny you mentioned that game because I, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you this. As high as I am right now, they lose that game. Uh, I'm just – it's, it's, it's the, the season's over. It's in the gloom and doom really. that we love. It's really true, though. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a, you have to win that game. You have to win that. Dooley think, has yeah. to win that It's game. probably more important than Florida. I hate to say it, but he needs to win that game. Well, see, that's the whole thing is that we were talking about before on our previous deal. You know, it's so it's such a big game because the Florida game – could possibly be a Florida team coming off of a loss at ten- Texas A&M, and now you're talking about Will Muschamp, who can't go through another six and six or six and seven or seven and six team like he did last year. Um, so that that game becomes very interesting real quick at the third week of the season. Yeah, and I think Tennessee needs to break the whole uh, Atlanta slump. Also, will help them. They've lost the last six there. They just. <laughs> It's in the it's in our heads. I mean, it really game. is. It is. That, does that so go back to like playing a uh, Clemson and the in the Peach Bowl and stuff like that? And NC or who they? I played the, NC State. The, the Peach Bowl. Three How losses. long has it been since we've had the Peach Bowl? It's, it's well, <laughs> it's, been it's, a, it's still the Peach Bowl. It's the Chick Fil A Peach Bowl, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe not. It's so <laughs> brutal. Every time I go there, it's like, oh, we're gonna win. I'm works. I'm expecting to win today. Boom. Ainge, pick six. Oh, the the worst one was that, that uh bad. was the. This is going back so far. Was it 2001 the against first uh, LSU game. against LSU when yeah. uh, Julian Battle all he has to do is just hold on to the ball and he waltzes into the end zone, oh, yeah. uh, but instead he just decides to drop it. I threw a, I, I threw a few things in the house on the. Uh, I remember I was camping day. and we were listening to the radio. It was just so miserable. Yeah, it's so sad. Miserable. Mm. I love when you guys bring up old wounds like that. <sighs> That's when the wounds started. I mean, you it know, really back did. to the 2001. If they. I mean, they're a win away from from going to play Miami in the Rose Bowl for for a second national championship. That in, was the demise. In three right years, there. and then you just kind of start going downhill. And that's why Tennessee fans are so delusional, is because you listen to what Britton just said. You know, Alabama went ten and three, a pretty disappointing season. Yes, ten and three was a disappointing season for Tennessee 
back in the the 90s and, and early 2000s. You didn't. I mean, you got 10 wins was almost a given. It was. Are we going to beat? We can't beat Florida, but can we still play for the national championship or, or yeah. you know, 11 win seasons? And now, it's just hard for our generation of fans to go to the point where you're excited about you know, an eight-win season, which I do finally think that you get an eight-win season, Tennessee fans would be excited. But that was, like, the biggest failure ever from when I was growing up as a Tennessee fan. Yeah, it's so much different. So much different. It's all about perspective. It's like Kentucky. Y'all don't, you don't, you know, hang banners for for SEC championships in basketball, you know. But we're excited if we make a bowl game. Yeah, it's it's just just the opposite. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're just happy to get to six wins. The so. problem with Tennessee is, you know, we at least, you know, we're starting to get basketball up, and then just the still most unbelievable thing ever that the <laughs> greatest coach in my lifetime. Then you have a cookout, right? Yeah, I had a barbecue and got fired over it. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I still can't believe that. How does that happen? I don't think Cal Perry any- takes people's tests and nothing happens to him. Yeah. Barbecue. Oh. Barbecue wasn't the problem. Who cares? It's the, it, your lines is, is not that bad. <laughs> well, let's let's go through the schedule. You want to do that? That works for me. <laughs> <laughs> does it? Yes, it does. I'm sorry. I'm bitter. Still now. on his Bruce. Yeah, no. All right. First game we're going to start off with is the NC State game, the Chick Fil A kickoff game. On is that Friday? Friday, yeah. So, yeah. so we have Vandy and S- USC. Starting us off Thursday, Thursday yeah. and then roll right back into it with a, a second game Friday. I love yeah. that Thursday, Friday, Saturday college. Well, that's how it yeah. should be good. Nice. Start it off. Good. College and who does football. Clemson play down in Atlanta? They play All Saturday. Auburn. 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 Okay. So what do you think, John? Wait, the first question about that right. game: Are you upset that Tennessee is the ESPN U game and Boise State, Michigan State, is the ES? I guess it's the ESPN game. Is it really? Yeah, I, I know that Tennessee is the ESPNU game because I was checking because I don't get ESPNU. So I'm going to have to watch ESPN on my iPad. Yeah. Uh, at least thank you, Comcast. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. For finally, it. we can watch it on our iPad at least because I'm like you. I don't have ESPNU, and I've, I've got to, I couldn't stream it because anything local they would block right. because of Comcast. So thank you. So I, you know, I, 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 get I, I get to give Comcast never get, a compliment. I never get really upset about that. I think the big thing was like, you know, you want to be the CBS game, but I don't even care about being a CBS game because I think Vern Lundquist is just horrible. Terrible. Um, I think Danielson actually is very, very insightful, but I still don't like him that much, you know. But yeah, I don't I don't care. I mean, as long as I've got it on my TV somewhere and it's in HD, then it, it doesn't bother me. Well, and also now that we have, I mean, the night games, I mean, when CBS signed this deal, when did they sign it, 15, 20 years ago? It's been a long time. I mean, that was a cool thing to have that mid-afternoon game but you know a six seven o'clock eight o'clock night game nowadays catches just as many eyeballs i would think as a cbs afternoon game. well the other thing is is that if you're if you're going to the game you you want you want it that afternoon because now you know it's just like it's just college football going to a game is more of uh, it's it's more of an entertainment value than it is going to see a football game and so uh, i know that when i go to mississippi state you know, I'm not going to like September 8th when I've got to be there at 7 a.m. for 11 a.m. kickoff. Right. Um, I'll still be drinking and I'll still be doing everything. I'm just doing <laughs> a lot earlier. But uh, if you got the ability to kind of get there, get settled down, watch games, it, it just really enhances, you know, that experience. So anyway, back to the game now. <laughs> back to the game. <laughs> Sorry. Who wants to kick us off on on wins and losses? I'm gonna I'm gonna take a W against NC State. All right, Blair. Britain. I hate to do it. I'm going on L there. You know me. I hate to choose Tennessee, but I'm, I think they're going to win that one. I think I think that they are going to break the curse of Georgia. Uh, I think they're going to get things started in the right foot. But uh, I, I do I do give them a win there. Um, I'm going to go win, and uh, I just want to reiterate: this is the most important game. I think in quite a long time. Uh, I think Tennessee wins, uh, and it's not that close. You're you're saying two touchdowns? Yeah, I think Tennessee wins. I think they look impressive, and uh, and kind of rewrite that expectation of seven wins with that first game. You, you like you said, you guys need that game because it's 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 a good schedule for you guys. So the the second game we're going to. Give you guys, I guess, Georgia State. Is that wins all yeah, the way around? I got it. I got a win. 
Britton, what do you got there? I'm going to go win there. Thank you, mm-hmm. man. But, but well, Watch out for that triple option. It got Alabama last year. With a, a close game. It actually was. It was like 12 <laughs> points, something like that. 12-point game. It's close, yeah. Uh, the, the third week, September 15th, though, you do have a tough battle. Uh, it's hosting Florida, right? So you get Florida up in Knoxville. That's the good news. Uh, Britton, we'll start with you again. What do you think there? All right, you're going to like me better here because I think you're beating Florida. And I think it's the opposite. Um, and I have to go back to my Florida podcast, but I think that Florida's going to lose to A&M is what I chose. Um, but they're, And their backs are going to be against the wall with Tennessee, and they're going to have to come out with a win. So I think they're going to – I'm going to take Florida in that one. Blair? I am going with Tennessee, 3-0 and to start the year. I agree with Blair. I think they win that game. That's a home game. Uh, it's a big one. A little bit of redemption for last year uh, in the Swamp where I think they could have played with them a little bit better, and, and Florida's turf injured uh, Justin Hunter on purpose. <laughs> I'm going to go with Tennessee also, but more so just because Florida's coming off of A&M. Okay. Because they're going to get beat up. And they have quarterback issues. Yeah. yeah. That'll yes. be a classic defense-offense matchup. Well, that, didn't uh, Florida – Yeah, broke his clavicle. Yeah. Yeah, he got hurt. Um, I'm not sure he was uh, that good anyway. Driscoll? Yeah. Yeah, right? Driscoll. But he was – So they have he was still Brissett. Yeah. They he, hadn't named a starter. Yeah, he was still competing. I don't even if there was a – Yeah, was he a, was the higher-rated guy. I mean, he was like a, a five-star recruit, I think, coming in. Yeah, you know, he's – Big – uh, pro style passer, kind of what they were looking to go to, um, but didn't play up to the ability the last last, last year. Last so. year, yeah. So, we're going to give everyone uh, on the round table a win for Akron. Is that correct? Yeah, I got them winning that game as well. All right, John, we're going to start with you this time. You get to go to Georgia. Gosh, in my heart of hearts, I I mean I. I'm not gonna. I'm definitely not gonna take Georgia. So I'll take Tennessee. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I like wow. It. <laughs> <laughs> was that a homer pick? <laughs> that was I mean, <laughs> again, I mean, it, it all depends. We we lose to NC State. We lose to Florida. We probably get hammered. I've got a. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll jump in. I've got an overall record that I've got them getting, and they have to have some losses somewhere to get there. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a loss at Georgia. Um, that's a, that's a tough place. We haven't fared as well with Georgia over the last few years as, as we did in the in the during our, our stretch run we beat them you know eight or nine times in a row so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a loss there yeah I mean this starts a really really tough stretch of four games in five weeks I'm taking an L against Georgia I will give them an L as well I have to go with a loss as well but I'm excited about that I'm actually going to that game you Tennessee fans out there so um it'll be a great Man. atmosphere who are you cheering for in that game red and black <sighs> I'm probably going to be for Georgia. That's Sorry. just so – I don't uh, get it. Like, I, wh- what's – Why do you root for what? Georgia? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're <laughs> going to be in why, Athens. Like, why, do you hate, why do you hate Tennessee? I mean, you're a Mississippi State fan. I, no I, never, rivals. I never had any issues with Tennessee until I moved to Tennessee. And, and then, then now because, Tennessee, because you're around Tennessee just, fans. It's just so annoying, yeah. yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like blinding orange disgust. Yeah. It huh. could be a huge – I mean, you talk about how big the Florida and NC State games are going to be. I mean, if, Man, if Tennessee Athens. does come through undefeated, you think Georgia's probably undefeated too? I mean, that that could be the epic matchup, but I'm still going with Georgia. Yeah, I think the whole thing about – you know, I, I've looked at this many times and I've, I've kind of done the same thing. I think that – I think Tennessee wins a game that it's not supposed to and loses a game that it shouldn't. Yeah. And I could really see that shouldn't game, unfortunately. Again, I hate to say this, but I could see it being Vandy. Yeah. I think Vandy Vandy's just going to come out – and I mean, they're – I'm not saying that they're better than us. I I think Luck's going to be involved, but I I just see him pulling every every last trick out of the bag and really trying to take it to us. Like that's their Super Bowl for the year because they're not going to a bowl game. Wow! For all you Vandy Whoa. fans out there, <laughs> we needed you on the, the Vandy live. podcast. We need to live in. I mean, I, I just don't. I, I think Franklin. I think uh, he has a so-so year this year and either loses some recruits that he's already got uh, or leaves. I love it. Love the, the uh, he's just a, he's hate. just oh he's just a, a slime ball. I mean, nice. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I've never met anybody. This is awesome. I really oh. uh, and he calls I, into the you know local sports talk all the time. I just want to choke him out. Man, <laughs> are you talking about Chiswick or? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is Sorry, this is this is the banter and love we've always wanted on this, this roundtable. W- we just need to have Caldwell yeah, on this no, one. We'd, exactly. have a, we'd have our first fist fight. I was I, I'll to go ahead and tell you, we would have our first. <laughs> Altercation if he was here. We right would now. need some restraint there because he, I thought he was going to go at me for, 
for taking jabs at their AD. You did, yeah. I saw. I watched that podcast. I, I don't have a problem with with Franklin, to be honest with you, as a Tennessee fan. I think that he's do, he's doing exactly what Bruce Pearl did. Um, I think Vandy fans are hypocrites if they if they ever say anything bad about Bruce Pearl. If they like if they like James Franklin, that's exactly what he does. It's smart, man. Anytime somebody calls in, they start talking about Tennessee. He'll just hey, we got James and on West End on the line, and, and you know he's he's on there. It's smart to do that. Um, I'll reserve my prediction for the game for about five minutes from now, but but I think he's he's the best thing that's happened to Vanny football and ever. Yeah, it just I don't understand how he's getting the recruits because you look at look at their stadium and then look at any other stadium in the SEC and how could you say I want to go play in front of twenty five thousand people? I don't understand that. I mean, Vandy. Just I got that answer. It's finding the. Well, it's doing your homework, knowing that those kids are intelligent. And you're talking about a Vanderbilt education, that, that's and the thing they're going to play selling. SEC football, and, that's the thing and you get to you get to try to rebound, and you know if you can do this, and yeah, you're you get part on of the field, yeah. 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 I mean, I think there's a lot going for Vanderbilt. You, I think you've got they a lot of selling some. points. I mean, the educa- education is definitely something, but how do you say, hey, you know, you could play in front of ninety thousand people, just for instance, you know, in most of the other stadiums in the SEC, and then you you kind of come here and it's not even going to be full. I mean, I think it's the difference of you can have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar scholarship at Vanderbilt, or yeah. you can have a, you yeah. know, a, a fifty thousand dollar scholarship. Well, at it's it's not going to be just twenty five thousand people there this year. Yeah, it's, they they're they, going to sell out. Most yeah, I mean, he had, I'll go he ahead had and tell to you give this. them something. Oh, no, there'll, there'll, be the more, there'll be more Tennessee yeah. fans in oh, yeah. the stadium than Vanderbilt fans for the uh, for the game on the seventeenth, yeah. November seventeenth. Yeah, I mean, we looked at we talked about the couple podcasts ago. I mean, if you look at their season ticket price. For, Smart. Uh, for a Vanderbilt game, it's like half of, of most of the SEC teams. So it's all about getting people in the seats and and season tickets sold this year. So, I mean, from a, from a recruiting standpoint, he's got lots that he can come in and tout. And you're able to get it. And you got to remember that you're not only recruiting to a, to a kid, you're recruiting to their parents. And you come in and you're starting to tout a, a Vanderbilt education and SEC football and all the things that, that you can promise them outside of football because he can still talk to the numbers and say that I'm going to do the best I can to get you recruited in the NFL, but let's face it, only X percentage, and it's a small percentage, under what, 5% of players make it to the NFL that play in co- on the collegiate level? I don't know. I'm making that number up, but it's pretty small. So, you know, I still we still are able to get people in front of those folks. If you're good enough to go to the NFL, we have Jay Cutler. We have uh, the wide receiver at Chicago. Was that Bennett? Earl Bennett. They've uh, got a DJ Moore, Hunter Hill, and Meyer. I mean, they've got a so yeah. pretty so much the can, entire. We can Bears. get your son if he's got the talent and the the capabilities to that next level. If he doesn't, we're going to offer him a Vanderbilt education. It's going to be one of the best educations in the world. He's going to get to play in the SEC. He's going to be at a Division One school. There's a lot that you can do outside that that Franklin has at his disposal, and and he's doing a good job with it. Britton, what do you think? You're on West End. I think we're talking about the wrong team. Uh, no, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. We're going over the schedule, and now we're on Vanderbilt. <laughs> <laughs> but he is a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have – Back that to we're, the schedule. We're, Sorry. We're through with that rat hole. So, like Blair said, we're, this is that was the first of four tough games, um, Georgia. Then they turn around and they go to Mississippi State. And, Blair, we'll let you kick that one off. I am actually got them down for an L for that one. I can't believe that. Sure. No. This is the game. It's kind of funny, and I, I don't know if I told if Drew and I talked about this before, but it's funny because I see Mississippi State fans. Mississippi State fans, if you if you kind of as a generalization, they think that this Tennessee game is a game that they can win. Tennessee fans automatically mark it up as a W. So both fan bases – you know, for a Mississippi State fan, they see that Tennessee struggled the last two years, and they say, hey, this is a shot. We can beat Tennessee because you don't ever play them, don't ever see them. And Tennessee's like, well, that's just Mississippi State. They're not going to lose to them. But the only reason I say this is because I really think that Mississippi State is going to get over the hump of Auburn this year in the second game. And by doing that, that they'll basically be sitting at 5-0, and I believe, um, with uh, Tennessee coming to the house. So it's going to be a little bit of a crazy atmosphere Um there and it's always a tough place to play if you don't actually go there very often um but i think this is the four game stretch where they're going to have some difficulties i could totally see them winning no problem but i'm just going to take a nail just for the heck of it uh you know i i look at three big 
three big road games uh, in that stretch with Georgia, Mississippi State, and South Carolina, and I think they're going to go one and two in those yeah. games. Um, and I think it's just as likely that they'll beat Georgia and lose to Mississippi State uh, just for the purpose of having a pick. I mean, if you put a gun to my head, what's the most winnable game out of those? I'd say Mississippi State. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it a W. But uh, I could see them losing Mississippi State. I just I, – in, in my heart, I just – I don't see them losing all three of those road games. I see them coming through with one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and make it Mississippi State. John? I have them down for a W on that one. I'm not. I'm not going to pick them to go. You don't, I mean, don't Do you worry. You have them down for a loss no, no. yet? Yeah. No, not yet. But I would. There's a. There's a few coming up. Kentucky, right? They're. They're still yeah. coming up on the schedule. <laughs> uh, we may run up the score this year on that. Written. Uh, I'm going to go with a W for Tennessee, but I think it's going to be close. And I just did some in-depth analysis <laughs> on this. And at Mississippi State, like Blair pointed out. Um, I think they're going to get over the hump against Auburn, too. And they've got basically a bunch of cupcakes yeah. uh, uh, leading into that Tennessee game. And I do think there's a really good chance Mississippi State is 5-0 and coming into Tennessee, and there's this crazy atmosphere and the kind of pressure that probably Dan Mullen and the Bulldogs haven't seen yet. We can go 6-0 and against possibly a ranked Tennessee team. And I think it winds up being Shoot, they're gonna Shoot, they're going to be top ten if John's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it winds up being too much, and Tennessee wins in a close one. I'm going to take the Bulldogs. <laughs> I, I've got them, what, three and three? Is that yeah, right? three and three. So it's As bad as they could be right now, probably. <laughs> no, they could be worse than that. And, and, and Bob, <laughs> that does look like it's probably going to be the night game that week, too. I mean, looking at that week's lineup in the SEC, you've got – South Carolina at LSU, that's probably going to be your CBS game of the week at 2.30. Either that or Alabama-Missouri or Tennessee-Mississippi State. Those are your three choices. Uh, of well, here's the, the thing that we haven't talked about. Um, I'm going to be in Las Vegas during, uh, during that game, and this is going to be a magical trip for me. I'm going to win a lot of money. Uh, the Titans are going to beat the Steelers on Thursday night football. And <laughs> so I, I just can't imagine Tennessee losing that game because this is going to, once again, it's going to be a magical trip for me. Right. So, I so think, uh, I think had a fortune cookie a while back that said something like you have a, something uh, coming. I can't remember. It was something that I made in my head sound like I was going to have a great trip in <laughs> Vegas. So Now that I, I know Shane that you are going to Las Vegas this weekend, I can pretty much guarantee a Mississippi State win. Okay, good. A trip. It is, was it say a trip in your future will bring great fortune? Yeah, something like that. I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So they do get to host Alabama for the next game. And Britain, we'll let you start with that one. Okay. Uh, I think it's going to be a close one because no matter how good either team is, the, the games are typically close with last year notwithstanding. Uh, but I think Alabama wins in the end. Agreed. Agreed. I've got I've got Alabama winning that game as well. As do I. This is the this is the loss I see. The, the loss. loss. <laughs> <laughs> Please have them going. And this can go the exact opposite. We can lose. I could see us losing to Georgia and then beating Alabama. We the last couple of years we played Alabama, you know, f I think fairly well. Last year, I mean, obviously once the second half started, we got you know just numbers wise, we got our brains beat in. But love it. I was in Las Vegas for that game last year. Uh oh. But I mean, we weren't winning that game anyway. So. No. All right, so after Alabama, you have another tough one. Where's the bye week? Is it after? It's between it's Georgia, between and, Georgia, Georgia okay. and Mississippi State. So you go back-to-back -back from Alabama to South Carolina. So that's three tough games in a row at Mississippi yeah. State, then, at Al or then hosting Alabama, then to South Carolina. And I'll start that off, and I think that uh, South Carolina is going to win that one. Me too. Uh, I'll, give them, I'll give Tennessee a loss on that one as well. As will I. That's right. uh, unanimous then. I'm going South Carolina. So so two losses in a row there. Right now, so Shane, let's look at this real quick. Shane, you've got them three and five. I mean that's a that's a little hot seat. That's 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 burning up hot Definite seat hot right seat. there. John's got John's got them six and two, uh and and the crowd's pumped, although they've lost two in a row. And Britain you got four and four. You've got them what, I got them I got them four and four, winning four and the four. first four and losing the last yeah. four that we've talked. And you got them five and three? I've got them five and three. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's probably more realistic, but I think four and four, five and three is yeah. probably if somebody had to I think a put lot a gun in my head, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, that's where I'd put them. Because right, you're fixing to stack up on some here, I think. So you're looking at eight or nine wins for you. Well, not necessarily. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> Troy. I got them winning the Troy game. All right. Everyone's got a win in Troy. I'm getting yeah. married that day, so yes. Okay. 
You're going to be wearing orange. I did not get a fortune cookie, though. That's it. You're getting married on a uh, – oh, John, John, you're getting married on a game day? Football Saturday. Troy, I had to. Dangerous. Troy, though. Yeah, that's why you get – I got married in the just the hottest day of the year on June 4th just because I could not – And it was outside. Yes. I just didn't want it to be, like, around any kind of sporting event. I had the uh, schedule out when I was making the plans. What did Leah think about that? I had to. Was she on well, board? She, I told her, I was like, do you want people there? <laughs> I, I got exactly. married on a Mississippi State bye week here in Nashville in Franklin and two of my buddies are huge Ole Miss fans and it was the first time Tennessee was going to Ole Miss in 20 years watch that game at your reception yep and we got to watch it at the reception I was like, didn't Tennessee win not happy very very close game yeah very close at the end and Peyton and Eli had come back for the toss because they both were in his hilarious well kudos to you happy. for having the the game having a TV at the what wasn't the reception like at Legends is that right no it was Golf at um, Franklin Franklin yeah, Golf Course. The old Franklin Country Club. Okay, yeah. I knew it was somewhere out of the country club. Yeah. Good digs, man. I remember that. that was a good good reception. It was. That was a long time ago. It was seven, eight years ago, wasn't yeah. it? Eight years October. Shoo. All right. So, we all have them winning Troy. Next, yep. they host Missouri. Seems like there's a lot of home games for them. Uh, Same numbers about everybody else, but. Uh, okay. Missouri. I I've got, got I've got them winning that game. Yeah, I do too. Same. I've got to win. I think it's. I think Missouri. Close. I don't know if you've done much on Missouri. Well, you did them already, but doesn't their defensive line weigh like 240 pounds? Yeah. So I think at this point in the schedule is when yeah, that's gonna really going to show up. And even if Tennessee's run game isn't a whole lot improved by that point in the year, I think you're just going to be stuffing it down Missouri's throat. And I think Tennessee wins walking away. And, and I'm going to give them a win as well. Yeah. Um, so are you happy there? I, I you, got them, you got them at 500 now. I'll take it. Okay. Um, I agree with you, and I also think that, you know, I don't know how well the offensive line is going to be able to protect Franklin through when they get to the meat of the SEC. And you're getting to the later part of that, and he might be a little dinged he up at that point up, too. Yeah. Uh, and and his Heisman, uh, Kennedy, could be off or not because of that, because now that he's into the SEC. So did I get everybody? Did you go, Blair? Yeah. yeah. W. All right. Vanderbilt. W. Um, I, I think that Tennessee is, is going to go out there and they're going to do what they always do, and that's uh, beat the blank out of Vanderbilt. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be a, a home game for Tennessee. I'll be there wearing orange, cheering loud. Um, I, I probably won't have to pay for a ticket. I'll get one given to me uh, by a Vanderbilt fan, which is generally how I get in, which just kind of goes to show you the, the way it goes. I mean, Vanderbilt fans <laughs> let Tennessee fans come in there, which is nice of them, and I hope Vanderbilt wins every game they play besides Tennessee. I really, I, I want Vanderbilt to be successful. Um, probably unlike what John's going to say here to my left. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm native Nashvilleian, born and raised, and, and I hope they start playing competitive football, which I think they're on the verge of doing. But, uh, I mean, one win in the last, what is that, uh, 18 or 20, like 28 years. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with the odds and say Tennessee wins that game. John? Obviously. <laughs> I'm going to pick Tennessee. I think this game, I, when I, I said it earlier, this game really scares me. I, I don't know what it is. I've thought about this the whole year. I was like, I could easily see us losing to Vanderbilt this year. But, you know, like I said, beating some team that we shouldn't. Um, so, yeah. And I hate Vanderbilt. <laughs> Britain. I'm going win, I think. I kind of agree that this game is historically close, but I think I think Tennessee's pissed off about how last year went, and they're gonna uh, they're gonna lay it lay some smack down. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'm gonna give them a win as well. Uh, I don't think that even though there's a lot of bulletin board material from the last year's game, from the comments that Dooley made, uh, that I think were somewhat taken out of context. It was. Uh, that was said in the locker room. I yeah. mean, you, you just it just goes to show you this day and age. But Franklin used that as fodder from the very beginning. Sure. And and, and I hope he should. I mean, that's yeah. that's fine. He yeah. should, they should use that. I don't think it's going to be enough to get Vanderbilt over that hump, though. And but it goes to tell you this. You don't think Tennessee was prepared and excited about that game? Look what they did after they won. So I don't think Tennessee is going to be just sleeping on them and thinking they can't win. No, we, no. They notice. Tennessee notices that Vanderbilt's coming up. They notice that Tennessee's re losing uh, some recruits to Vanderbilt. Um Derek Dooley's a smart guy. He's going to get him prepared for that game. It's not going to be – I don't like know that he got him pumped up for the Kentucky game last year, but he got him pumped up for that Vanderbilt game. And he will Vanderbilt was a yeah. much better team than Kentucky last year. And, I and Tennessee played much better against Tennessee – or against Vanderbilt than they did Kentucky, so. I would love to see him run up the score. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And he very well has – he might if he, if he has the opportunity. He will. Uh, he's got to. And, all right, so that leaves the final game of the season. 
Kentucky. And Shane, I'll, what do you think about that one? I'm going to give Kentucky a loss. And it, it pains me to say that. Did you that, pick Vanderbilt or Tennessee? I picked uh, Tennessee. Okay. So uh, I, I hate not choosing Kentucky, but it's, they're just going to be – they're they've got to find a win, and it's going to have to come from Missouri, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt. They're, they're going to have to find ways to win to, to get to a ball game this year, and, and I don't know if they're going to be strong enough to do that. Uh, I hope they surprise me, and I'm completely wrong with that pick, but I'm still going to have to go with Tennessee. Tennessee. Uh, I think Tennessee wins that game. It's major, major uh, – uh, you know, redemption from last year. I'll take Tennessee. Tennessee, they should have all the motivation in the world to avenge last year's debacle. So, yeah. see, so here's my here's where I'm going to make my my point. Um, the over under win total for Tennessee is seven and a half wins, yeah. um, and we've got two obvious Tennessee homers here. One that I didn't know I didn't know there could be a bigger Tennessee homer than me, but one's got them going ten and two. I've got them going nine and three. I think that's probably if I once again you made me bet my life on it, I'd bet eight and four. But I'm going to go nine and three because I want to show a little favoritism. We've got Blair who who admits Obviously. he he hates Tennessee. He's got them winning eight games. You've got Britton who doesn't like Tennessee. He's got them winning eight games. And Shane who definitely doesn't like Tennessee <laughs> has them winning seven games yeah. um, and that's and we all kind of thought he might be a little hard on them so I think that's a that's one that if I was going to lay money I, I think that's one of your ones that you can you can bet on I think that win total I think it even started at seven at some places yeah um, seven and a half I think that that's a yeah to me I mean you got a really tough four game stretch which I don't think they lose all four of those but I think I they could they, they could the lose yeah, yeah exactly. I don't think they win the first four um, and then you can you know you can I mean, the Mississippi State and the Vanderbilt, I mean, those two games could be a toss-up. You never know what happens. You, they could win both of them. They could lose one of them. Um, so, I think eight eight wins is – now, if they start out and lose NC State, I don't know what's going to happen. So, is eight yeah, wins – Yeah, then it could easily be – I mean, is eight wins enough for Dooley? Absolutely. Yes. Is seven wins enough? Depends uh -huh. on who he beats. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's kind of funny because I would and, have never – And that's changed from the end of last year because seven, he was out. Yeah. And now it's – Well, I it, think seven is out if he – I mean, if he loses NC State and Florida and then you got to go through that four-game stretch, that's going to be tough. Does he but have seven sudden, wins if he does that? No. Yeah. I don't think so. you got to win one of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah plus then you're going to – the players are just going to be – They're going to tank. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing that you're a little bit worried about is – he can lose that How team early. How they're going to respond, yeah. Yeah, if they, if they have some tough losses, uh, he could lose that team early. You know, I think it's funny doing this because, you know, I do have them 10-2. and two. However, I could see it anywhere from 10-2 and two to – I wouldn't be surprised if we went 6-6. Six and six. I mean, I, I just can't say we're going to lose to Georgia just because that just that, – that kills me even worse than Vanderbilt. But, uh, I mean, realistically, I, I really could see a four-game gap kind of swing right either way. Right. And wins. I know that there's a couple games I gave them losses that they could they could easily win. So I mean, it could turn around and be a nine and nine and three season or seven and five. Uh, that's the thing about I think of of most of the teams we've looked at, there's more uncertainty for the volunteer schedule as far as what way it can go than pretty much any team we've talked about. I mean, no, I just think that's the the unknown of. I mean, on paper that offense yeah. looks really good and that defense has talented players. I mean, that's a team – there's not yeah. many teams, like you said, that you could – I don't think Tennessee's going to go 10-2. and two, But, I mean, there's not many yeah. teams that could go 9-3 and three that right. could go 5-7. and seven. Well, it's yeah. also the where, you know, you don't know what's going to happen during the season. I mean, you take that South Carolina game last year, you know, South Carolina's dealing with a complete head case at quarterback. Y'all are starting a third-string quarterback, and so you end up having this game that could have just been won by either one of them. Um, and – you know, it's one of those deals. I mean, we caught South Carolina when they started um, – what's his name? Connor Shaw Didn't for the Connor first Shaw, game. Connor Shaw played for them that – yeah, that was He Connor might Shaw. have. But yeah, he, he was against but, Tennessee. But Mississippi State played – had the, you know, lost the game 14-12 to 12 with a, a last second. I remember that game. Yeah, yeah and, and, and then Connor game. Shaw, and that's when Lattimore got hurt and all that stuff. And so, you never really know what each Saturday is going to bring. There could be an opportunity for you to – and, I mean, if you were looking at Tennessee at the beginning of last season, you weren't expecting injuries from Bray with his hand or, or Hunter to go out like he did either. I mean, I mean, realistically, what do you think their record is last year with Bray and Hunter the whole season? Would they end up with seven? Six? No. No, five, five. wins. They were five, five and wins. seven. That's right. They were. You'd have to say at least two wins. Yeah, I yeah, think, they, I think they'd be seven, seven and five, five or eight and four. 
depends on that Florida game. If Tennessee could have won that Florida game, they would have had so much momentum because if you remember, I mean, everybody was high on Tennessee that after that half. Cincinnati. Well, we, we, I mean, I good grief. To lose to Cincinnati. He lost uh, – I mean, we lost uh, Hunter in the – first one. Yeah, I mean, the, no, like I was talking the, about the Florida first, game. You had you had Florida that first half. Yeah, I never felt like that. I mean, but, yeah, it was close in the first half. But, I mean, you lost – losing Hunter, I think it was like the first play of the second drive or something like that. That hurts a lot. So, who knows? So, we all, we all have them going bowling. Um, another team that I think everybody has going bowling – is the next team we're going to talk about. I hope so. <laughs> it just depends on is it, a, is it a BCS Bowl or is it a national championship bowl. I think that's really what it's going to come down with Alabama, and that's the, that's the next team on the, on the agenda. And, Britton, you want to kick off just telling us some thoughts about what you think about this year? Sure, yeah. Uh, you know, the quick breakdown is um, obviously probably the number one concern would be secondary this year. Um, you lost three starters from last year's secondary. Um, it's a little bit different than 2010 when, when they lost uh, four starters because at least the guys coming in have, for the most part, have experience and have played. Um, so I don't think there's going to be quite as many of those breakdowns that led to losses against South Carolina and some other teams in 2010. Um, and then the, the next um, kind of concern would be um, the receivers are all – there's some experience there, but they, they have not been the primary guys like they're going to be this year. Kevin Norwood kind of had a coming out party against the most overrated football player in college football. Um, guy that just got suspended. Can't remember his name. Honey Badger, yeah. <laughs> um, but that was the first time he really has showed up on a, on a you know a national stage. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can fill those shoes. And then um, depth at quarterback is probably the third concern. It basically, if McCarron goes down with Philip Sims transferring to Virginia, um, it's really bad if he goes down. It's it's as bad as it was for Tennessee last year. Um, so, number one priority is probably keeping him healthy. Um, but the O-line is m probably the best O-line that yeah. they've had maybe ever, definitely in the past 20 years. Um, you've got possibly three first-round picks in that, in that O-line group right now. Um, and then the defense should be solid again. Uh, and then unlike most of Saban's teams, um, since he's been at Alabama, you do have uh, someone who's somewhat of a proven star at quarterback who will – who will be relied upon a lot more heavily this year uh, to win games. So um, that's kind of the quick breakdown. It should be a good season. Now, how how much of a lower tier would you consider Lacey over Richardson last for last year? For you know, it's year? it's interesting when when he was he was actually in the same recruiting class as Richardson, and um, he was highly touted. But when when you're signed on the same class with Richardson, you just don't get as much pub. But he was a four star kid, um, and either number one or two back in the state of Louisiana. And uh, the expectations from people around the program are that there's really not going to be a huge drop-off. Now, he's not the superstar just stud that Trent Richardson was, but they are expecting him to, ever, to, to uh, be the, the, the next running back that goes to New York for a Heisman ceremony. Probably not win it, but he, they expect him to be up there just the, way, the same way Ingram and uh, Richardson have been. So. Yeah. And they're expecting that this year? This year, yeah, I mean, he what averaged seven point one yards a carry last year. Yeah, and he's I mean, still dealing with some turf toe issues, yeah. but he he looks to be good to go. And uh, I, I, they don't expect him to come back for a senior year, if that tells you anything. Okay. So he's who won the? I mean, this is gonna be ridiculous. I can't remember who won the Heisman last year. RG three. That's right. That's right. And so, what uh, what about the wide receivers? I know. Sorry about that. And somebody else can can answer that too. I mean, that's one area to me. It seems like for a few years has been a, a notch below where Alabama's other talents have lied. I mean, you what last year they took five defensive people a, a in the draft. Correct. And you know Richardson as running back, but uh, Julio Jones probably the last guy I think of um, that that's really been that yeah. all star, just huge. You know, go up and get that kind of ball. And uh, it, where do they look like they're going to be in the wide receiver standpoint? Well, do, they they have, do they have somebody that can be that Julio Jones this year? They don't have Julio Jones, but he's sort of a once-in-a-generation kind of guy. I mean, you, they don't, they're not trying to replace that, I don't think. But, they, you know, um, Kevin Norwood, as I said, is expected to come in and, and do some big things. Um, Kenny Bell is another guy that caught a few touchdown passes last year, and, and he's going to have to step up. Uh, Amari Cooper is actually a 
a true freshman this year, and uh, you never hear Saban talk about true freshmen in the preseason uh, press conferences and, and camp stuff, and he just is gushing about him. So to me, that, that means I'm expecting him to do a lot. Um, I, I think part of the thing with the receivers is because of the way Alabama does offense. Yeah. You know, that you're not going to – unless it's a guy like Julio who is just a genetic freak, you're not really going to have – the big time stars and I think if these guys had gone to other schools they may be getting more pub but that's just kind of a, a byproduct of of what Alabama has had at quarterback and what they've done philosophically yeah. offensively. and then you lost you know the Carter kid who just never really yeah, did anything case. and he's already gotten kicked out of practice at his new school um that's Chris Carter's that son, son Duran. Duran. Yeah. Duran. so um they kind of flirted with him all last year and then finally kicked him off here what if, with about a month ago yep. from that standpoint. What about tight end? Because, you know, you always have like this big bruiser that just runs down the middle of the field and goes. Yeah. But I know that – what's there, like a Michael Williams guy or something Michael like that? Michael Williams is back, and he's – up to now he's a senior, but up to now he's been the 280-pound sort of third tackle that they've had, yeah. um, mostly more important with the running plays. And they use – have used their H back traditionally more in the passing game, which was Brad Smelly yeah. last year, who kind of came out of nowhere to have a really good year. But they are expecting uh, Smelly to be much more involved in the passing game this year. The H back is one of those that's kind of up in the air. They've got several underclassmen who haven't played any yet, um, actually competing with Jalston Fowler, who was a backup running back last year. Um, and that place, that position is pretty much unsettled. So it'll be interesting to see how they uh, how they handle that position. How do you think Jones is going to do switching over to center? You know what? It's funny. I, I have I have this vision in my head. You remember two, three years ago, one of the Pouncey twins was yeah. moved to center for Florida. Yeah, and they had like fifteen snaps that went awry. Yes, yeah. and I it was just a bunch had, of the Tennessee game. And he was good. I mean, he's in the NFL. Yeah. He was a great guard. Obviously, Barrett Jones has proven he's good at the other line spots. But I just have this horrible image of him botching a snap in the LSU game. You know, when we're up up six with two minutes to go, and they, you know, I don't know. He, he supposedly he's doing well, but I can just I'm just having nightmares of already <laughs> about something like that happening. Drew, you got something to say? Yeah, I mean I think that uh, I mean I can't expound on more than Britton. I mean he knows a lot more about this than I do. I think the big thing uh, the, it is tough with the wide receivers. We got to realize that all these wide receivers they have they're four star, you know, about the best in the nation. Um, but besides Julio Jones, I mean they haven't they don't have these big superstars, and it's hard to have a superstar when you've had. Your last two running backs have, have gone to New York for the right. Heisman, you know, uh, presentation. And you're returning four starters on the offensive line, and your one replacement is one of the biggest, you know, recruits. He's a sophomore, going to go ahead and step in and play left tackle. If you can step in and play left, left tackle at Alabama, you're a pretty good offensive lineman. Um, and that's the – however you say his name, Cyrus, Cyrus K. Um, but uh, – you know, I think that McCarron is going to be steady for them. Uh, there's nothing that says Lacey's not going to be good. Uh, I think that, you know, they have to play Arkansas and they have to play LSU this year, which is going to be tough, as always. And they get both of those on the road, which is which is tough. Um, and their defense, I mean, good grief. I mean, how can you say anything bad about their defense? Uh, yeah, they're, they're replacing some guys in the secondary, but everybody they've ever put in has been good. I, I mean, when's the last time Alabama had a bad defense? So – I think that, you know, they're going to be talented. They still have Nick Saban there. And until Nick Saban gets tired of uh, just winning SEC championships and national championships and decides to just go on to the CFL or whatever he's going to do next, then I think they're, you know, it's going to be tough for them to, for me to pick them to lose games. Well, and that Nick Saban, I, I saw this as, as far as his career records. In 16 seasons, he's 146 and 54 with one tie. In five years at Alabama, he has 55 wins. So in five years, he has one more win than he has total losses in his career. Uh, that that just goes to show you that the guy knows how to win. And so, and Rich Rodriguez should have been there. <laughs> that still makes me so mad. I mean, you talk about like you know just bad you know situations where you know Tennessee, the whole Bruce Pearl thing. I mean, just quickly how that how that happened. And Rich Rodriguez, I mean, that's who Alabama wanted. And he was going to go there. Happening. Everybody knew Rich Rodriguez was going to come there. I was so mad when he was going to come there. And then he decides the next day, you know what, I don't want to leave uh, West Virginia. And they end up getting Nick Saban. I mean, look how the roles would have been reversed. I yeah. mean, right now you'll have Brady Hoke. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and you'd be looking up, but, but it wouldn't, you, know, you wouldn't have two national championships. So. And uh, 
where would have Saban went? He was still at Miami. Was he at Miami? Saban was with the Dolphins, and yeah. he was yeah. not leaving. You know, yeah. Yeah, I'm right. not going to go coach Alabama. But it's crazy looking, doing a little bit of research. You know, you forget from Gene Stallings till Saban how you know, bad it was. How bad it really was at Bam. I mean, I mean, Mississippi State won three out of five years under Croom, uh, two years back to back. Uh, thank goodness for – I wish John Parker Wilson was there. You know, he was career-leading passer or whatever, but he handed two football games to Mississippi State. Or Tennessee won like seven in a yeah. row or something. I mean, yeah. it was just, you know. The, my formative years were the worst years in Alabama history. It was terrible. You know, the years when you grow up and yeah. love start to really love your school. And now how uh, many, how many coaches did you have during that span? Oh, man, I think it was six. Um, Three in one year, right? Yeah, because Mike Price, the whole – cocaine stripper thing uh, you goodness. had Francione Francione just backstabbed us um, then Shula was the one before Saban uh, but there was uh, there was a couple others in there it was it was yeah. it's been six since Stallings well you DeBose, had what's his name the DeBose, DeBose debacle. The, whole, the debacle yeah of. and when did Stallings leave when was that? 94 or I think 94 so I mean there was years. about a there was about a there was about a decade where, you know, they won games, but, you know, there was that, you know, that Shula stretch, you know, but then before that you had just the whole complete debacle that was just – you didn't realize how, you know, bad it was. Well, let's take a look here and look at Alabama's schedule. I think we all would agree that they're one of the top teams in the country. And let's go through this and see how top they're going to be here. We'll kick things off with their first game, and it's not an easy one. Um, it's Michigan, uh, and Michigan. 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 They're uh, in the AP. What are they ranked? Is they're eight, six, seven. Eight. It's yeah, it's a bunch of girls. Somewhere <laughs> in that top seven, eight, nine area. I've got it right here. I closed it out. They are number eight in the AP. Number eight in the USA Today poll. And received one vote for the f- for number yeah. one. Yeah. For number one, as the number eight. And if they win that game, they'll receive quite a few votes for number one. That's a, that game's in Dallas. I think that's gonna that's a great game. I can't wait for that. What what what's the kickoff time for that, Britton? Uh seven oh five. It's on, it's on Saturday. Game, yeah. yeah. Man. That's gonna be so exciting. You know, you got Thursday night, uh get to watch a little football. Friday, obviously I'll watch Tennessee and then that one right there. And it's weird. I I mean, John's gonna stab me when I say this, but I the first time in my life I, I cheered for Alabama in that L S U game. And the only reason I did it is because they they were so freaking good. I mean, that's the best yeah. football team I've ever seen play and when they played against LSU in that championship game. I just couldn't – it's just hard. I mean, you don't want to root against something that you know is going to happen, you know. <laughs> you just might as well might as well just – and I didn't have any reason to want LSU to win either. So, it's kind of in a no-win situation. But, uh, but I mean, that, that game was unbelievable. Um, I'll start us off. I just – just my lasting memory of that last team and knowing that uh, uh, Denard Robinson, you know, he he goes down with injuries quite a bit because he puts himself out there getting hit, and there's not a team out there that's going to hit him harder than Alabama. So I, my guess is he does not uh, play that entire game, and I think Alabama wins that one. Are you saying he loses his unlaced shoes? Yeah, I think he gets knocked out of his shoes a couple times. I, I, and he has a couple ridiculously good plays, but uh, but I think Alabama's going to be too much for him. John? I think Alabama crushes them. I'm going to go more than two touchdowns. Wow. Britton? I think it's a 12-and-a-half-point line, and um, – I, you know, it's interesting. I could see I could see Denard Robinson breaking off some kind of long run on a broken play early with with all the new starters on defense for Alabama. But if you look at Denard Robinson's history, he he is injured a lot, and when he plays a good defense, his numbers really suffer. He just puts up huge numbers against some of the bad defenses. So um, I could see him busting something early because of a broken broken play, broken assignment. But uh, I think. Uh, Alabama wins going away pretty easily. I just remember that last ball game he played in last year. Who who did they play? That was a great game to watch. You remember the Notre Dame game? I remember watching well, maybe that, that last was the year. Game they were yeah, it was then the first oh, night game in Michigan, and they were playing was. Notre it was Dame. An unbelievable game. He you know he throws like there's three touchdown passes, which were just complete throw the ball up in the exactly. air and allow players to make plays. And um, I think that's the that's the that's kind of the, the thing game, that yeah. I'm thinking about is. You know, you can't do that against Alabama. And what I think a lot of times is, is I think I think Michigan and I think Brady Hoke and them want him because he is so injury-prone he's so important. They don't want him ad-libbing and doing some of those things all the time. And so they try to keep him in the pocket some, which 
he suffers from doing that, and I think he's more dangerous when he's ad-libbing. But um, you really can't ad-lib on Alabama too long before you get snot-bubbled, <laughs> especially when you're 5'9", or whatever he is. I'm going to give him the Alabama the win as well, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout uh, like John over there. Uh, I think Michigan is going to have some trick plays up their sleeve, and you know why not just unload it at the beginning yeah. uh, against an Alabama to, to – to really try to win that game. So I'm going to see them have a lot of things that are scripted and, and rehearsed and played out to, to uh, show off his talent, Robinson's talent. And for that, I, I, I see it being a little bit closer than two touchdowns, yeah. but I do see Alabama winning that. I'm one. with you on the same thing. I think Alabama wins, but I do think it's like a 10-point or less game. I and think it's like a 24-14 or something And Alabama like that. has a history of not necessarily blowing people out because they don't have to. Well, that's that's the thing is is you're looking at a, a, a coach, Nick Saban, he – He's he doesn't run the score up on people. Yeah. I mean, he he just wins the game. He doesn't care if he wins Penn by State one game. point or he wins it. But exactly that Penn State game, you know that last ended up being. Year. I mean, I would have bet my life that they would have covered that spread. And I don't think they did last year. I think they they missed covering that spread by like a, a point or something. So, but uh, it, I I totally I totally see that one being closer than than what the spreads out there. I just that just might be the way the money's going. Why it's getting so high. So let's go on to. Well, let's hold on a second. Yeah. I, we all four of us right here are going to pick. Uh, Alabama against Western Kentucky. So let's save this time for Shane to tell us how his alma mater, Western Kentucky, is going to beat Alabama. They're taking a bus. Are they? <laughs> yeah. Sarah got the email like last week. All taking right. a bus or picking up. They have a stop here in Franklin on 96. If, if I can't choose Kentucky to beat Tennessee, there's no way in hell I can choose <laughs> Western over Alabama. I think Western has a better shot beating Kentucky this year than uh, Kentucky has of beating Tennessee. So. Uh, they, there's no way that Western, you know, they've got, what's this, their third year in Division One AA? Maybe their fourth. Um, you know, big, huge strides for the Hilltoppers, but there's there's no way they're going to be able to beat the talent Alabama. And I know everybody else is going to agree with that, so let's go on. Now, this is a this is an interesting game this next, the third week, and that's the Arkansas game. And, you know, this is really one of Arkansas's first tough matches, I think. If I, I think they've got a first first couple games are pretty easy we yeah. looked at. Um, and and they're going to come in looking to win this game. And Matt McBride, the Arkansas fan of the podcast, has Arkansas winning this game. I'm going to throw it out to everybody here and see what they think. John, <laughs> John, why don't you start us off? Sorry. Oh, this is a tough one at Alabama? It's at it's Arkansas. At Arkansas. At Arkansas. I'm I'm probably going to go a little bit against the grain here. I'm going to take Arkansas at Arkansas. And then I honestly think that Alabama runs the table after that. They just get a little bit so annoyed. <laughs> so we don't have to ask him oh, anymore. No, you don't, you don't have to. They're He's got to leave anyway. This, so. is their, yeah, this is their one game, and I think that, honestly, that uh, they lose here and then they win out. He's out, dropping it. <laughs> Britain? Uh, I'm going to go Alabama, and it, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, obviously, Arkansas have, has talent. They're a good team. And it'll be really interesting because Petrino seems like he couldn't beat Alabama because the key to beating Alabama is not throwing it 40 right. times a game. And he doesn't, he couldn't figure that out. Yeah. Um, or he's just too prideful or whatever. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if John L. Smith can figure that out. And uh, Niall Davis is one of the best backs yeah. in the country if he doesn't, you know, break a, break a leg running through the first game. But, um, if, if they can figure that out, you know, they have a chance to win, but I think Alabama still wins. The other thing with Arkansas is they always open up with two cupcakes, and then they, you know, you go from from terrible teams to one of the better teams in the country. It's been that way the last three or four years, right. and that always seems to go against them. So uh, it'll be interesting, but I'm going Alabama. And, and I'm going to take I'm going to take Alabama as well. Um, I think John L. and I've said this before is is not as good of ga- in game coach as Petrino, and, and that's where you have to be an, a great in-game coach to be able to beat the LSUs and the Arkansas or the, or the Alabamas, and I just don't see him doing that, or he or he wouldn't have been out coaching uh, some one Division two school out in, where was he, before they brought him on board? Back at his alma mater, I can't remember the name. Yeah. Uh, Weber State. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. I mean, if he, if, he was a, if he was an in-game coach, he would have, you know, still been at Louisville or somewhere else. So I, I just gonna, I'm gonna give it to Alabama. I'm going Alabama as well. Um, and Niles Davis can be the difference, um, but I just think 
I just I, until they do it, I'm not gonna vote again. I'm not gonna go against Alabama. Um, I, I've got an overall record that I've got Alabama finishing this year. Uh, once again, I've got to find a loss somewhere. I don't. I don't know. I mean, this is horrible to say. I don't think they're gonna get beat by Arkansas. Like if you ask me, but. But for the purpose of giving them a loss, and, and I'll go ahead and tell you, I don't think they're going to lose to LSU. I think they're going to win one of those two games. Um, and so I'll go ahead and give them a loss at Arkansas, even though it just kills me because they got beat 38-14 last year and they got a new coach and all the negatives around it. I think I'd be much more excited about picking Arkansas if they didn't have the whole Bobby Petrino mess. Um, just for the, for the same reason that, that Britton said, um, Niall Davis is incredibly good. And you know what kind of talent they've got at quarterback, and you know that they can throw the ball. And uh, and to to mix in to have a top probably five running back in the nation, um, that's going to be a little something that that's going to be tough for for any team to stop, including in Alabama. So I'm going to go ahead and give them a loss to, to Arkansas. Now that that poses an interesting question that we've not brought up. If Arkansas is able to pull that out, and it's because that they're able to to put it on Niles Davis's shoulders and he runs it through, does he all of a sudden start to receive Heisman talk? I mean, it just depends on what he does. I mean, I think it's going to be tough. Uh, I think being a, a SEC running back on a winning team, you're, you're looking at Eddie Lacy, you're looking at Nile Davis, you're looking at Marcus Lattimore as your three big ones. Um, that's going to get Heisman Trophy talk. If Niles Davis is running for 850 yards in the last six games like he did two years ago, you know, because, I mean, he didn't even do anything the first five games. I mean, he just had that unbelievable stretch. Um, if he's doing that and running for 1,300-plus yards, yeah. That's what I think, too. Yeah, I, mean, I think he's up there. And especially if, be, if it's a win against Alabama. Yeah, yeah because they're they're likely because I don't, 11 the, and 1. The problem with him is that down. he's got a quarterback that's going to throw the free yeah. football, and I think South Carolina has got a, got a coach that's going to go, we're going to line you up, buddy, and you're going to run it 35 times, and we're going to ride you as long as we can. So I think I think Lattimore is the one that's going to be the kind of the, the lead back in the SEC to go do that. But he could. Okay. Niles can catch the ball, too. So, I mean, he, he destroyed the SEC that last six games two years ago. So, we all have – we've gone around the room with yep. Arkansas. All right. Next one, we're all going to give Alabama a win against Florida Atlantic. I agree. And Ole Miss. I agree. Poor Ole Miss. What about at Missouri? Any any troubles there? I think they win that game as well. That could be the beginning of Missouri's injuries piling up. Yeah. <laughs> and we've already covered this one. I think all of us have a loss – for Tennessee at this game, is that right? Yeah. And, and once again, I think that this is uh, – I think this could be one of Alabama's tougher games um, when you look at it on paper. I think that obviously you got the Arkansas game and the Michigan game. I think Tennessee could be a tough one. I mean, to go to Knoxville, like Britton said, in the past besides last year, and except for the first half, uh, that, that Tennessee-Alabama game is a close one. And Tennessee, Tennessee wants it, I'm telling you. If Tennessee can get some momentum, then that could be a, a, a close one and maybe some magic could happen. But, yes, I agree. I think Alabama wins that game. All right. So, the next one, and we'll hold off on Britton and Blair on this one. So, we'll go Drew, John, and then myself. Uh, I've got them beating uh, Mississippi State. And we know John does. We don't even have to ask John. John, John just stay silent the rest of the time. Yeah. And, and, and I think they're going to beat them as well. Britton? Uh, I'm, I'm going Alabama here. I think it could be a close game for a while, but I think Alabama probably wins yeah. by two touchdowns or more. I, I, I'm, I'll go Alabama as well because i got a number that I think they're going to win. But the only thing that you got that sandwich between at Tennessee, at LSU, and if we're going with the scenario that they get over – Mississippi State gets over Auburn, they're going to be no less than 6-1 and one going into that game and probably be a stunner of a top 20 team at 6-1. and one. Um, going into Alabama, so it could be a little bit of a different scenario than people think. It'd be more interesting than, into it, yeah. than looking at it right now. Yeah. All right. So November third, they they play at LSU this year. Blair, kick us yes. off again. I'm going to take an L, just because I think they're going to have one L. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, I just cannot pick them uh, losing to LSU the way they they handled them in that championship game. I think they got in their heads. I think the way they played. Uh, I was much more impressed with Alabama's win over LSU than LSU's win over Alabama last year. And uh, I know that it's tough to play in the swamp, but, but if there's any coach that just doesn't really care about that, it's going to be it's gonna be saving. And we know John's got them winning, so. Um, well, this it hurt me, hurts me to say it, but I actually think this is going to be their loss. Um, LSU is 
equivalent in talent to Alabama, and they seem to kind of go back and forth. Alabama wins one, LSU wins one. There's never – nobody really has a big-time upper hand in this matchup. And if you think Baton Rouge is, is a hornet's nest on a normal weekend, yeah. you can imagine how pissed off they are, and they want to win this game. The fans and the – and the players. There's going to be a lot of bourbon going down. It's going to be loud. Um, definitely some unruly Cajuns. Definitely some unruly Cajuns. It, uh, it, you know, it's, this game always comes down to one or two plays uh, with the national championship uh, being an exception. Um, but I think I, – I, I, I just don't think you can repeat anymore as a national champion. So I'm kind of like you. They have to lose somewhere, and I just see it being LSU with it being at LSU. Yeah, I have, I have a number in my mind as well, and – Undefeated is not it, so I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to give them a loss somewhere, and and I've not given them any yet, so I'm gonna have to choose that one, and I don't see one, I, I, I just don't. Texas A&M might be the only other hiccup. I think they're gonna be more of a surprise team in the SEC, but I don't think that's it. I think it's LSU. Is Texas A&M your Arkansas from last year? It worked pretty well for yeah, me. Yeah, they were they were very good. So, all right, so I'll kick us off, and uh, like I said, with A&M, that's who they play next. You know, I think they're they're going to be the surprise team in the West for everybody. Um, I think there are going to be a lot of good things coming from them, but they're just not going to be able to, to match up against Alabama yet. They're not going to be on that caliber. Um, they're going to be that mid-tier team, but they're still going to come in and surprise some folks. But I still i am going to give that game to Alabama. Blair? Alabama. I got Bama as well. We know John. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, say it, John. Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bama again, but – this will be interesting if they if they were to lose that LSU game. Last year they played Mississippi State after losing LSU. They won that game, but they looked sluggish. You know, it was it was ten point game, something like yeah. that. And you know, you you could see something like that happen where their season all of a sudden is over because they lost to LSU. But even then, I think they win. All right, so Western Carolina, we're all going to give them a win there. Yeah. I've actually got them losing that game, Shane. <laughs> uh, that Western, Ca- one. <laughs> Western Carolina's got a, a quarterback by the name of Ricky Jones. Um, he's going to – I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think he's uh, – He I is Ricky. His name is Ricky Jones. Though? I have no idea. Okay. I just made up a name on I the thought, spot. The way you were looking at your iPad, I yeah. thought you pulled up, pulled him up real quick uh, so you could give nope, out some information. Nope, just looking at their schedule. In-depth analysis. But, yeah. uh, no, I think we all got them losing that one. Right. I would have sorry. I would have loved for the quarterback to be named Ricky Jones. I can look that up. Let's Google it. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like that. And Alabama, just just to go back, head coaches for Alabama since Gene Stallings. You've got DuBose, who uh coached for forty seven games with twenty four and twenty three. Obviously not a great uh a great job there. You had Franciona that was there for two years, uh twenty five games, seventeen and eight. You had Mike Price who was there for five minutes. <laughs> uh you had Mike Shula, who coached 49 games, but they had to forfeit some of those, I believe. I don't think he went uh, – had ten, only 10 wins. Uh, and then you had Joe Kynes for, for one game. So you really only had three coaches uh, that were there for an extended mm-hmm. period, but all of them left a little something to be desired, except for uh, – I know Bam was high on Francione and he just, just left, but, uh, but th- those were the guys there. All right. And so they're going to end the season with hosting Auburn. I'll take it. Alabama's going to win that one. Yeah. I'm going to say Alabama wins that and puts Gene Chizik straight on the hot seat with, like, at least his fifth loss. Drew? Uh, I think Alabama wins the Iron Bowl again. Alabama. <laughs> uh, echo what Blair said. I think they win easily, and Chizik gets exposed for the fraud he is without <laughs> Cam Newton. <laughs> he doesn't have the deep pockets, is what you think? Yeah, I guess the money dried up. So, uh, all right. Who who has the most losses for Alabama? Everybody's got them going Everybody eleven won. and one. All right, so that's pretty safe. Choice. I think they're over under ten and a half. Yeah, we we looked at that because they couldn't give them eleven because um, there'd be no money going the other way. What about all right? I'm going to pose this question and then we'll have our our open mic. So we're down to LSU or Alabama in the West. Is that everybody in agreement there? Yeah. Let's go around real quick and pick our West champion. I'm going to go. Well, you've picked LSU to beat them, so yeah. that means LSU's got to lose two games. Do you have them losing two games? I in don't. The, in I, the I think it's going to be LSU. Uh, I'm going to go Alabama for the exact opposite reason. I think Alabama wins that game heads up, and uh, I don't think Alabama has two, can find two other SEC losses. Alabama. <laughs> okay, I picked LSU, but my eternal optimism tells me that LSU will lose twice. Right. 
and Alabama will represent the West in the well, SEC championship. They, and let, here's the deal: Alabama represents them. They play uh, Tennessee, and Tennessee wins the SEC championship. That's that's where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go East next. Uh, I I think it's going to be. Uh, Alabama as well because I think LSU I think I have them losing to LSU is that correct but I see LSU having some issues with Arkansas and since they'll have the tiebreaker by beating Arkansas Alabama will be your West champion but what about on the east side who who, who is going to emerge from the east that's that's where it's really muddy I well, think you smart got money says Georgia but I'm South actually going to go South Carolina I'll go Georgia yeah I think South Carolina Every time Georgia's supposed to win, they yeah. don't. So it's really hard to pick them. So I'm going to go South Carolina. I will too. It's funny that none of us thought that Florida actually has a chance. And no. and you hear it, but you hear you've heard a lot of rumblings in the the sports community that that they're the surprise underdog that they have a shot to win the East. And and none of us even gave them a thought. So I think there's I think there's more down in Gainesville to be concerned about than most people up, up there have. So with that, we're going to start with our roundtable. We're going to start with the round table. We're going to start with our open mic session. You got something? No. Okay. Um, and that's the, the point of the podcast where it's anything goes. Drew, you want to kick us off, show us how it's done? Um, yeah, wow. That's a, I, I usually have some good stuff to say. I don't really, I don't really know what to, what to talk about. I haven't seen movies. Um, haven't, you know, haven't done too much except for going to school and, and, and thinking about football. Uh, I'm excited about what what's going on. Um, been watching a lot of the TV that I've been watching. I've been watching a lot of the, uh, the like the cooking shows. It's weird because I've I've been dieting the last like month, and uh, but then watching all the food shows. So it's like I'm getting I'm getting my uh, my fix. my ki- my fix from just watching people cook food and and eating it like diners, drive-ins, and dives. Yeah, watching, exactly. Watching him eat all that disgustingly great food i watched uh i was i was flipping yesterday and uh came across uh that adam richmond guy who does the the yeah. man versus food and he was it was the finale of the country's best sandwiches and uh that was probably awesome oh it's so good i mean who doesn't love sandwiches and they're like the the final four was like a like a pork sandwich from philadelphia or something that looked really good and a chicken sandwich in Savannah, which I'm like, I want to go to Savannah now to get this thing. And I mean, just all the sandwiches look ridiculous. And here I am, not able to eat them, but you're not know, gonna go eat some broccoli or something. <laughs> John, uh, not much really to say. Just wanted to uh, tell a little story. Uh, last weekend, I was working up in the Tri Cities area, so I figured I'd mosey on over to Milligan College and try to get a glimpse of the football team. And uh, didn't didn't get too far. Uh, I wound up uh, parking. There's a post office right in front of Milligan College in some small town, and uh, so I, I tried to walk up the hill, but I was uh, quickly escorted back to my car. <laughs> what did uh, they What did they do? Was it, who was it? I mean, just uh, it was just it was just like a local you know sheriff who was just kind of hanging out there, one of the local police, and I just kind of walked up the side because there's a tent. They had the front entrance blocked off with a tent, and and a truck, and I was like, well, I'm obviously not. We're just gonna walk straight in there. So I just walked up the side, and I was quickly escorted back to my car. But it was kind of cool. They were playing Rocky Top Chimes uh, right before practice every day. So that was kind of cool. Britton? I'm going to keep it in the football vein. At the time of this recording, there is one Saturday without football left in the year. So I know we're all excited. I can't freaking wait. Uh, It's the long, cold winter, even though it's summer, is over. Metaphorically, the long, cold winter is over without football. And now it's time. And that's funny. Uh, it, th- I have a blog post that's going to show up sometime this week r- recapping Game Three schedule and the games to watch, and that's the picture I've picked is a, is a guy in a tent out in the middle of the snow-covered world because it's over. I mean, it's football is right around the corner, and, and I'm I'm like you, I'm so excited, uh, and and I really love how this kickoff weekend, and we've mentioned it a couple times, and that's probably my biggest thing is that you have great football to watch Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, and so, you know, it's just not ma- – and, and looking at the first three weeks, uh, I'll give sh- some huge props to the SEC, the way they've been able to do the scheduling so far, is, is there are good games staggered pretty much all throughout the day where you're not turning around and all of a sudden it's that 7 o'clock uh, ESPN game and you've got three games to choose from that you really want to watch. Um, you know, the one week there's 11 different games between 14 teams and almost every game you want to watch is staggered. Unless you're, you know, the homer for that that team, and then you're going to have some overlap, and you can't avoid that. 
but they've done a great job so far. Let's hope they can continue to do that because, uh, you know, as football fans, especially in the SEC, uh, you can look at the ratings, and it doesn't matter. Uh, your team is going to rate higher. Uh, you know, the Alabamas, the LSUs, that they're going to get a lot of that TV ratings. But SEC fans in general just love to watch football. If, they're, if it's not their team, they're going to watch the other teams because they want to know who they're going to be playing next. So uh, they've done a really good job getting some of those quality games out there. So I'm super excited about that and can't wait. So, Blair? I uh, had a great trip to Charleston for the PGA Championship and talking about diners, drive-ins, and dives. Got to eat at two locations there. Got the early bird diner. Got to have the uh, chicken and waffles, which were fantastic if you watched it. Diners, drive-ins, and dives. And then fuel, we had some drinks there. That was a pretty cool little spot. So had a good weekend. Good. I, I, Ready what for I, football. Did you get hit with a golf ball or anything? No, but uh, Tiger duck-hooked one on nine and almost hit us. And so I was about two feet away from him hitting a 262 fairway wood out of the rough. That was possibly the most amazing thing I've seen. So, but he duck hooked it? Yeah. Did he hit it Off on your the tee box. But no, oh, okay, uh, the okay, shot okay, that okay. I saw. Because he always say, hit us. We were literally walking down the course. The most amazing like, shot he's ever seen yeah. was a duck hook. Yeah. Did you run up there and like, no, it was like crazy. just it was, look at his ball like everybody else No, I was, we were oh. standing there. And the ball landed. We're like, who's that? And they're like, that's Tiger. I'm like, Tiger and VJ had you know, he's 60 yards in the middle of the fairway ahead of him. And I'm like, man, what did he just do? And he got up there. He's 262 out, and his caddy was talking. It was pretty cool, like, to listen to them talk. They're like, hey, you know, you remember the galley to the right, 262, easy up and down. So he hits a 262 yards into a little galley by the green, goes up and down for par. It was unbelievable. Fantastic time. Good. And, and if if anyone ever has the opportunity to go to a major championship, it's oh. it's unbelievable to be able to do that. I know I've done one up in Louisville at Valhalla. Have you been able to go to one? I've never been to a golf event, period. I've only been to a major. I've never – if you're going go, go to go yeah, – so. I want to go to Medina for the Ryder Cup this year. I think that would be good. That's in Chicago, so that would be, oh, be, be a awesome. good trip. Yeah, that would be – the Ryder Cup would be unbelievable. John, have you ever been to – yeah, I've been to St. Jude's out in Memphis, and I've been to Augusta. Okay. Augusta would be something else. Britain? That's pretty cool. Have you been? I've been to the senior tour that came to Nashville a few times. I, I drove my wife by time. so she could see the um, the uh, Magnolia Magnolia Lane. Oh, at the entrance to Augusta? Yeah, we stopped at Augusta to get some gas, and so it's – On your it, way. Yeah, it's yeah. middle of nowhere. Did they let your wife out at so the weird. gas station? <laughs> 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 Women aren't allowed to pump gas uh, in, in Augusta. And with that, we'll call this podcast done.